Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Urban Update. I'm Byron Barnett. On the show today, the biggest African festival of New England pays us a visit, and we'll also give you details on the second annual Roxbury Rocks Music Festival and Award Ceremony. But up first, the Dominican Republic and Haiti, two neighboring nations with a long history, sharing the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean. In 2010, when Haiti was hit by the devastating earthquake, its island neighbor, the Dominican Republic, rushed to help and was among the first to send rescue workers food and water. But others will point out that anti-Haitianism in the Dominican Republic reaches back decades, if not centuries, unacknowledged and institutionalized. So when the Dominican Republic's highest court ruled to revoke the citizenship of children of illegal Haitian immigrant workers, a measure to be applied to anyone born after 1929, or a form of retroactive denaturalization, the international spotlight turned on. While international human rights groups have criticized the Dominican government for denationalizing as many as 200,000 Dominican born who once qualified for citizenship there, the government and national sentiment on the island staunchly defend the immigration laws of their sovereign nation, explaining that even today the United States and Canada are the only developed countries that offer unconditional citizenship to children born to undocumented immigrants. They claim that as a nation, the Dominican Republic has the right to enforce its own immigration rules. Adding to the mix is the fact that the vast majority of Haitians are black, which has fueled charges that racism has played a role in motivating the policies. Locally, the discussion has also heated up, as State Senator Linda Dorsina Fori, who is Haitian American, is filing a joint resolution in the Massachusetts House and Senate denouncing the actions of the Dominican Republic, while Cambridge Vice Mayor Dominican American Dennis Benzen has followed suit in a similar ordinance in Cambridge. Still, there are many Dominicans here and abroad who feel that the actions of the Dominican government are being unfairly portrayed in the international media for simply enforcing immigration laws that need to be upheld for the good of the nation. Joining us this morning for a lively discussion are State Senator Linda Dorsina Fori, former State Rep Marie St. Fleur, they're both of Haitian descent, and immigration attorney Soyla Gomez, and Dominican, a Dominican-American and immigra immigration attorney in Lawrence, and Ezekiel Diaz, former vice consul here in Boston for the Dominican Republic. Now, we did invite the consul of the Dominican Republic to the show, but unfortunately, she was in the Dominican for today's program. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for coming in to Urban Update. Thank you for having us. Uh, Senator uh, Forey, let me start with you. Um, why a resolution here in Massachusetts condemning, condemning you know, a foreign nation? I would say that it's important to do a resolution in Massachusetts. Other states has done it, but we have the third largest population um, in terms of Haitian American. But more importantly, I just want to start off that we don't believe this is all Dominicans, right? We have friends and families who are Dominicans. This is the Dominican government in the DR that has taken the step. So this resolution, it would be asking them to take a pause, to take a moratorium, because this will cause a humanitarian crisis. And that's what this resolution is about. As you mentioned, mentioned, Vice Counsel Dennis Benzon from Cambridge has already done a resolution, and we are looking to follow suit. Now, uh, Ezekiel, you feel that the, the media portrays the uh, Dominican Republic, excuse me, as Haiti's worst enemy, where, according to you, uh, the DR has really been Haiti's uh, best friend for a long time. Uh, why don't you uh, explain that a little? Um, absolutely. Uh, since the past, um, it's been a history, a bloody history between uh, DR and uh, Haiti. And uh, right now, the big picture outside, the, the picture that everybody said, the government, the Haiti, uh, Haitian government want to show outside as that we are the enemy, which, which is not fair. We've been over there helping Haiti every time Haiti needed. If everybody has to remember right here the earthquake, the last earthquake in 2010 in Haiti, we were the first, uh, the first country to be inside Haiti, helping Haiti people, restablish, uh, restablishing communication system in Haiti. Cons um, and our people was there helping all Haitian. We are no enemy of Haitian. Um, in all our history, uh, we never been offending Haiti as a country. We always respect 
Haiti in every, every forum that we have the opportunity, calling to the international countries to help Haiti. But now we are the back in, the, in this movie, in this history. Uh, let me move to you, uh, Marie St. Fleur. As a Haitian American uh, living here in the U.S., why is it important to, that you uh, spread your concerns uh, through the Commonwealth? And I guess, what do, you, what do you want people to know and what do you want them to do? I think first we, we want uh, everyone to know is exactly like Senator Forey said, the quarrel is not with the people of the Dominican Republic. The quarrel is with the action of the government of the Dominican Republic. It is not the first time that there's been a quarrel between the, the government of the Dominican Republic and the people um, in, on, the, on the other side of the island, the Haitian people. The reality is you have a situation here where there are people who were born in the Dominican Republic since and who's generationally has multi-generational people who've lived there or were born there since 1929 who now they want to push out those people under their own constitution were Dominicans because all the way back um, as I understood it but, um, I would say till 2010 the law of juris solis applied that's right if you were born on the soil then that's who you were and then the Americas that is the law that is essentially the law in the Americas and so if you were born there, then you should now, and, and, and we have no quarrel that if you have um, immigrants who have immigrated there and are undocumented, you want to put a program in place in order to return them to their country. I think that's absolutely within the border. So I think what we're saying is that rendering people stateless is, is not right in any country and that they can't force them onto another country and that the international community must stand up in order to stop that particular action. Uh, Soyla Gomez, uh, you live uh, in a predominantly Dominican community, meaning Lawrence. Uh, what, are, what are you hearing? What, what are the thoughts and ideas that you're hearing in Lawrence from the Dominicans? Um, I believe that this is a, a complicated issue. And people in, 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 a, in a community like Lawrence, um, especially people who have deep roots in the Dominican Republic and, and travel there often and, and understand the, the, what's happening more from from the Dominican Republic out um, believe that um, the Dominican Republic is is in its own right to regulate its immigration laws uh, to regulate the people living within the country uh, people who have the sentiments of somebody who's more from the United States listening to maybe the, the sentiments of people within the United States have mixed feelings and they don't they don't necessarily understand the, the, the process. I think this is a very complicated issue. I think that more education as to what's happening is required and that um, the sentiments that I hear are um, people feel proud of their countries and they don't want to hear this lashing of, you know, the Dominican people are being unfair towards the Haitian people. Now, uh, Linda, Senator uh, DeSena Fari, um, now there have been a lot of uh, activists, a lot of people, pretty vocal on both sides. Uh, my understanding is that, uh, do you feel that the, the Haitian Americans and the Dominican Americans are uh, have, have been able to, to come together on this issue at all, or do you feel there? I mean, I'll say, you know, we, we had an event in front of the State House, right, a press conference where we had Congressman Capuano, we had um, Dominican American leaders in the community come forward and speak out, right? So it was a coalition, so it wasn't just Haitian people. And I think that there is a coalition of people who feel that this is a humanitarian crisis. As Marie St. Fleur said, we understand the DR doing their immigration policy. I think more importantly, we're looking at people who have been born and raised in Dominican Republic for over 80 years. An example, here in America, I represent South Boston. It's like the Supreme Judicial Court, take the Irish, and say if the Irish came here in 1929, if you had a parent that was not American, and yet you've had children here, you've had grandchildren here, so you're American, but the government, the Supreme Court is going to say, well, you know what, Irish, we need you to go back. We're gonna rent. We're gonna say that you're stateless. That you know we need you to go back to Ireland. So I think it's critical that that is the difference, and it's not being anti-Dominican. It's just saying that to create this 250,000 people going into Haiti that still is not quite stabilized after the earthquake, it's gonna cause a serious crisis. And that's what we're, we're really trying to get people around the table to talk about. Now, Ezekiel Diaz, so do, do you have the sense that uh, the international community is ganging up on on Dominican Republic, and, and maybe you could talk about some of the uh, the issues and concerns that you think are not being said. Exactly. And um, listening to uh, Miss Mary and uh, uh, Miss Linda Drosena, 
I, I could see that there is a, a missing information in what they said. And the thing is, uh, the last year, at the, since uh, 2013, November 2013, we implement a plan to regulate every immigrant inside the United States, not only Haitian, immigrant. It doesn't matter where they came from. And what happened? They are talking about children who were born in the Dominican Republic. Since 1929, our law has been clear about who is Dominican or who is not Dominican. And then what happened? Uh, it was um, a mandate for uh, the, the court to regulate those people. We did, we looked in, into our register, uh, in, into our books, and we found 50, 55,000 children uh, that were born between 1929 and 2013. All those people were guaranteed, we grant the, the citizenship. We grant the citizenship. And all those people and their descendants. Then there is a missing information right there. We are not putting out any person who is Dominican okay. out of the country. Okay. But that's not true. And we're getting down here in time, so I want to go around. I want to make sure that uh, everyone gets in the the most critical points. I guess Marie St. Fleur, uh, I guess uh, you were uh, recently in Haiti. Mm -hmm. I guess what, what were some of the, um, the sentiments that, uh, that you saw there? And what uh, really are you, would you like to get across the viewers today? today? It, I think I'm, I'm going to restate. I think that there has been a history. It's a documented history. Then the Inter-American Commission actually um, back in, I believe it was um, 1999, clearly stated that the Dominican Republic was in violation of, um, of hum the human rights because it was rendering a specific set of people stateless. I think that what, 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 I, what, what I heard in Haiti while I was there is a couple of things. One, I think there's a lot of, um, there probably is a lot of misunderstanding. I wouldn't disagree with that. But there's also a lot of anger. I think that because they look at the condition of the country right now, less than six years after an earthquake, they're trying to pull things together. They're in the middle of an election, and all of a sudden, they're asking that they absorb 500 or 200,000 people, depending upon who's giving the number. It's a problem. Now, we don't have much time left, but I'd just like to get a, your thoughts on, I guess, uh, is, is there a solution? I mean, essentially, you have here the, uh, the, the government is trying to denaturalize, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, is it fair? Is it right? Should, or should the government have the right to manage its own immigration policies? How, what, is there a solution? Well, I, I look at it as an attorney uh, and as a, an, as a person born, uh, raised in the Dominican Republic, and then uh, uh, practicing immigration law here in the United States. Uh, there are so many issues here involved mm -hmm. with, with this, uh, with this uh, problem. Uh, it's not, it's, you can't look at this, there is no one, one, on, only one solution for this. There's many different points that you have to look at. But what I, what, what I, what I want to say is that I don't think it has been enough time, not enough time has passed to say that the Dominican Republic is not trying to um, fix the problem. There is a regulation in place that I believe is, is being implemented. And I think that we need to give this government, this country, time to implement that regulation. Okay, I want to get in one, one, last, uh, one last thought here before we have to break away. Um, uh, a boycott. There has been some talk about a boycott uh, telling Americans not to go to the Dominican Republic. Um, I don't know. Uh, Maria, you've been, you've been in favor of that? I absolutely am. I think that in order for you to, because this is not a new problem, we can't pretend it's a new problem. The bo so, yes, I am in favor of a boycott in, in order to get Americans the government, not to Americans vacation? not to vacation until this matter is resolved. That Definitely, the Dominican Republic has a right to regulate who's, in, who's within its borders. Absolutely. But it does not have the right for people that, for generations, they created statelessness for to then push them onto another part of the island. And that would be a serious matter because the, the, the tourism is a big industry for the Dominican yeah, Republic. Absolutely. It's going to be a serious matter because uh, the first country who's going to receive the impact of that boycott is Haiti. Six to four of the workers in the uh, Tourist area in Dominican Republic are Haitian, and they're they calling for a boycott to Haitian, to Dominican Republic, but they really don't understand what is the the game in the Dominican Republic. And uh, Senator Ford, I'll just give you the last word on this. Yeah, I'll just say first of all that I think that the inter international community has a correct 
OAAS, the Organization of American States, CARICOM, they were calling for a moratorium from the Dominican government. There was a, a conference today where the Dominican minister and the Haitian minister said that we would like a mission to come to Dominican Republic. So that's what we're asking. Let's stop with this immigrant and deportation of people. Let's have a, a mission go in and take a look at what's taking place. And I agree with you in terms of the Haitians are the ones that are working in the hotels. Okay. But when we talk about rending people stateless, then it's a problem. Okay, and we'll leave it right there. It looks like we're going to have to come back and visit this because uh, this is an issue that uh, isn't going away just yet. Uh, thank you all for coming on the show, and uh, you know, good luck on, on both sides of this issue, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Thank you okay, so much. Thank you. coming up, another opportunity to showcase Boston as one of the most diverse destinations in the country, right here on Urban Update. Stay with us, we'll be right back.